Hey folks, and welcome back to the Inside the Mix podcast. Now this is the Synth Pals Pub. Um, if you are a new Inside the Mix podcast listener, welcome and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. In this Synth Pals Pub episode, I am very excited. I say this every time and I do mean it. I'm excited to be joined by my guests today. We've got Legacy FM, we've got Isle 9, and we've got Sub Neon, and we've got Aerowolf. If you want to join me at the Synth Pals Virtual Pub and feature on the podcast, just go to insidethemixpodcast.podio.com as there's a great opportunity to expand your network and learn from your peers. This is what we're going to do today. And as you can see, if you are which, uh, watching this or listening, it, bonus, every session gets aired as an episode of the Inside the Mix podcast. So you get more exposure for your music. So today we're going to discuss the one thing about music production you know now that you wish you'd know when you started out. Collaboration. And we're also going to look at how to grow your audience. Okay. And then we're going to play three songs from three of the artists who've joined me today. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. And how are you all? Terrific. Thanks for having me. Very well. Yeah, I'm you. good. Good. Fantastic. Stuff. Hopefully not too loud. Also, oh, well, look at my meters. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're okay, Tim. I was just going to say this um, is actually going live in the Facebook community group so i'm just seeing if that's fantastic happened um and it doesn't look no i think it has i think it has what you mean facebook's actually working wow well <laughs> it's certainly working on youtube uh, but whether it's working in the facebook community group <laughs> is a different thing it's uh sorry folks i'm just going to see this this is this is why you, you you should plan these things properly it's a start test my video is starting. Let's see if that works. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So, questions. The first question for today's episode is this. And this comes from community group member Nick Plain, a.k.a. Blockhouse. And he asks, what is the one thing about music production you know now that you wish you'd known when you started out? So, I'm going to repeat the question just to give you a bit of time to think again. What is the one thing about music production you know now that you'd wish you'd known when you started out? Um, let's go. Tim, do you want to take the uh, take this one first? I can try, yeah. Um, I, okay. I th God, this is, this is a bit legacy, really, because, like, um, I, I, I'm going back to when I first started doing music production. The one thing I wish I'd known was that ADATs were absolutely shit and that no one should ever buy them <laughs> and that computers were going to become as amazing as they are at doing audio because I'd bought tons of, like, ADAT machines. If you know what an ADAT machine is, sort of eight tracks of digital audio in the sort of, you know, you can just pile them up so you could get 24-track, 32-track, like, you know, digital audio. And I was running a studio at the time and I spent tons of money on ADAT machines because I was convinced the computers were still too dicey to do the job. And within about six months, half the ADAT machines had gone wrong and were costing me a fortune. And then I'd had to go and buy new light computer and all the rest of it. And, you know, gradually I got rid of all the ADAT machines and they just cost me an absolute fortune. So I think it, it sort of might seem un, not very up to date, but I think it's that thing is sort of like, Sometimes being like sort of, you don't want to necessarily go with the trends always. It's like, you know, I've got a microphone in front of me that was a Neumann TLM, which I've been using for the last 20 years, 30 years or whatever, and it's a great mic and it's going to continue to be a great mic. But like, it's that sort of thing of, you never quite know when you're about to go and waste your money on something completely useless. Like I bought a Novation sort of like supernova at one point in my life. And now I've probably got plugins that do the job just as well and probably better. And it's, it's that sort of thing. You can't really, I don't think you can kind of know it. It's in retrospect that you kind of see it, but like, you know, to go like, no, that's not a good road to go down. That's going to cost me a fortune. And really, actually, I need to just use the tools that I've got and learn how to use the tools that I've got really, really well. So I think 
that's really the point I'm making. Uh, but like that was an example of it. But you know, it was the, you you, you can you're bound to make mistakes as well. But like I think that you have to kind of maybe that's part of it is accepting that you do make mistakes and that's fine and you move on. You spend thousands of pounds on something utterly useless that becomes a sort of you know stops the fridge door opening. But you know it's um. It's 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 one of those sort of things like you you can't always get it right in music, but like yeah, I think sort of learning to use the tools that I've got in front of me really well is is the thing I wish I'd kind of cottoned on to maybe at some points when I was still gear hunting and thinking if I have this preamp, if I have that, if I have this, and I think that was never the answer. So there we go. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, kind of. Um kind of explains or, or it's that idea of like if trying to accumulate gear to make something better when you haven't really mastered what you have in front of you yeah you know and if you get oh, i can't get this right i'm gonna go and buy something else i'm gonna buy yeah. something else you know um until until you until you can get it right um which doesn't really work ada is that light pipe if i remember rightly is that the small yeah uh, you now in? have yeah, that's right. Ada Optical comes off in, in light pipe. And that's still used now a lot for to sort of, well, it has been used, but like, um, you know, just transferring uh, sort of uh, yeah. digital audio. But like, you know, Ada machines were actually VHS style. Um, in fact, you could actually use a VHS, but like, and put the tape in. And it was like a sort of eight track DAT machine. It recorded eight tracks of audio on a um on a on a tape on a vhs style tape but you could hook lots of machines together so you could have like they were modular so they'd all sync with each other but they had like complicated transports and things and they would just go wrong like really easily and they didn't sound that great either so you know and you didn't have all the joys of like hard disk where you can just hop all over the place you know you, you were still on a rewind fast forward put a locator in play but so it was it was it was a long winded job but i was just at that cusp when analog was dying and digital was coming in so it was that kind of thing where i think people computers weren't quite up to it that sat in the middle but you know um but now thank god we don't have to worry about that <laughs> we can do it all on yeah. an apple m1 or something yeah well you can yeah. you, you have one a nice <laughs> shiny one i do mm. I do. Mm. It's bigger than you think as well. I thought it was going to be quite small. It, it doesn't fit where I wanted it to. Are we still talking about so, the computer here? I was going to say, that could sound quite weird, <laughs> couldn't it? You, you took that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a follow-up question to, to that, though. Would you, um, Opus, would you say that it's a lot easier now for just anybody to pick up and start making music and producing and mixing and all that compared to, you know, prior to the digital transition? Yeah, I I I think so. I mean, I think other things are complicated now. Like you know, I mean, there is a like you know the level to which you're expected to be able to grasp software and grasp all these different things, and they keep changing. And you got a new th it, it's it's a, quite a speed, isn't it? And like new things to be able to upload to this, and all all the kind of social media and all the kind of things that you're expected to be able to do has mushroomed you know all you had to do was get something down on a tape and go there we go you know sort of thing it was it was sort of simpler at one point in one way but i do think the route in is easier yeah yeah a lot easier you know you can have a laptop interface headphones bit of software and be making music yeah so i guess it is easier yeah making good music's never easy though is it really <laughs> now that's a great question uh great question mark it's, mm. so it's one i always ask when i talk to engineers on the podcast who've been in the game for quite a while for example today i was talking to um, mike exeter uh, black sabbath and, and judas priest so he's been he's been around in the industry for a long long time wow. and i asked him the same question about how he got into the music industry and how he found his feet and cut his teeth and how different it is today to do that and it is so 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 different. I mean, I've, mm. I don't have the experience of of entering the music industry back in the '90s, but it's so accessible now. But like Tim said, there it's very accessible. But actually, creating something decent, and uh, that, that, that's the, that's the key. That's the key. You can have all the technology in front of you. You've, you've got to break yeah, through. 
I guess, a lot of other people making music, at, you know, you've got to be at a level or doing something better than that. And the level's quite high, isn't it? People expect quite a lot, I suppose, you know, so um, so that's hard as well, you know. Um, Friends but, in high places goes a long way. Ah, uh, well, yeah, yeah, it, that's always helped, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of uh, pretty average music out there that gets pretty popular. I'm like, okay, but... Not yeah, to yeah. On anybody else, but <laughs> no, that that's always true, isn't it? That there's there's yeah, and there's there's always people that sort of seem to do very well, and you go like, really, is it because your music's that great, or is just yeah, you knew the right people and had the right connections in the first place? So yeah, it does vary. Uh, and a fair bit of financial backing. Um, mm. It doesn't go amiss. Doesn't go amiss. We all had unlimited resources. We'd all have multiple albums out there. Platinum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe. Although, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Although, you could say, in argument, devil's advocate to that, if you had all that money, you'd go back to what you said earlier, Tim, in that you have all that cash and you just end up spending it and spending it and spending yeah. it yeah. on shit, shit you don't need and you just end up with a load of stuff on a, um Stu's back i think Stu's having a bit of connection issues but um, i'll just buy a yacht make it back <laughs> i don't even <laughs> like going into a right? studio <laughs> yeah 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 i think someone's done that before yeah Have they? yeah yeah there's a well, uh, there's a boat in bristol that's been turned into a venue which is um the fact oh really Ooh. i don't know if any of the uk contingent here have ever been to uh well, have you been to Bristol? Um, yeah, look at the fact yeah. that I've, 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 went, I've been there for a couple of gigs. It's, mm. When you've had a few beers, it's quite disorientating. Uh, <laughs> it's not quite even. And um, Yeah, but good, good fun nonetheless. Great stuff. Of course. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Tim. Go, no go worries. On, Tim. No, I was just going to say right. Floyd, of course, had a, had a barge, didn't they? So um, Dave Gilmore's studio on, on the Thames. Yeah, so, yeah boats, boats can be a thing. I don't know. That honest answer, I don't know if he, he still does uh, records there or not. Yeah. yeah. I thought about a canal boat, um, but then again, too narrow. I think you'd end up with a lot of um, standing waves and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, it couldn't even put you, not wide enough for your speakers, really. Narrow no, stereo no. image. <laughs> I did toy with the idea. This was when I was... Um, when I was when I was at university, and I was thinking, right, let's think of in, in inventive ways that I could get into the industry because you want to be do something different. I toured with a caravan for a while, and I thought about having a caravan studio and just like going around as a mobile service. And I was just like, all that mm. like the gear I've got in in a caravan. I, I don't know how safe it would be. I mean, you could punch a hole through a caravan wall, so not that I've done that, but. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Um, <laughs> there you go, audience. Just want to test that. Actually, no, don't do that because then that'll come back <laughs> on me if you did. <laughs> that I could coerce you to punch a hole. Some random caravan. synth wave musicians running around, punching <laughs> holes through caravans. Right, okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is that facts of the day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> facts of the day. You can punch a hole through a caravan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Right, uh, go back to the question, because um, I realised we're already, already quarter of an hour in. This is what I was saying off air, is the fact we've probably had one question. And then that, yeah, that, don't, don't ask question. me anything, it just takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, so going back to, just to readdress what it was, what is the one thing about music production you know now that you'd wish you'd known when you started? And I don't think it really matters how long you've been producing, because we're always learning. Um, so let's go. What, what about yourself, Sub Neon? One thing about music production you know now that you'd wish you'd known right at the beginning. Well, <clears throat> right at the beginning, it isn't too far <laughs> ago in terms of uh, electronic music. I started in August of last year. Um, I was in right. bands prior to that. And I guess um, one of the things that I was uh, ha having to, to teach myself is, is patience, really. Um, you know, when you when you're singing in a live band, it's all really instant. You know, you, you set up uh, and, and you play, you break it all down, and you go on to the next gig and everything. Um, but uh, now, you know, I, and I put a lot of pressure on myself when I'm when I'm producing. Um, and the, the, the first couple of mixes that I ever produced were dreadful. You know, I and mean, this is before um, uh, I'd started using Ableton. I started using a, a, a platform called Acid Pro, uh, which is um, uh, just loops, 
and yeah. uh, I, I hadn't heard of an EQ, didn't use an EQ, and it was all just wall to wall mud, you know. So, and I'd get really frustrated about it, but actually, through the, the community that I've, I've um, uh, you know, which is one of the best things uh, about producing music in, 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 in this time is that, you know, you can build friendships and critical critical friends more than anything else, I think, that, that will give you the advice that you need. But I'd give myself a real kicking. You know, this is rubbish. And I, I want it to sound, you know, I know what I, what, I, what I want it to sound like, but it's just not getting there, you know. So um, o over time and over many, many banging my head on, on the keyboard, thinking how can I get that bass to work with this other sort of effect um, I've, I've just started to give myself a little bit more breathing space you know if it's not working now leave it for a bit come back to it and and you know you've got a good chance of it um, with a fresh pair of eyes or a fresh pair of ears more importantly um, to, to make it glue together you know so that that would be my lesson to myself just just chill out a bit and, and have a bit of patience yeah, you'll get there yeah yeah it, i think that's wise words that. and i think it's something that yeah exactly it's something that we've um, mentioned many times on the podcast in, in about like having taken time and stepping away from a production if you're, if you're struggling with it and also just not being too hard on yourself mm. <clears throat> and thinking you've got to have the the final product there and then you know it's um and as you mentioned there it's it's great that there is such a wealth of support and information so my uh, the sort of a follow-up question to what you've mentioned there is what so you've you started uh, producing sort of last year you were in a band before is there a <clears> single sort of resource or or something that has really helped spearhead your production process in terms of, in terms of quality output you mean yeah i mean it's really bouncing snippets of tracks to people that i've i've made a friendship with you know and and they yeah. you know you listen to their stuff you know i'm talking about um you know helsinki project clinton um, Russell Nash, you know, the, the, all these guys, they're, they're not only are producing first rate music, but it's also, um, you know, they're more than willing to, to pay it forward, you know, and, and, and take you through some ideas as to what you could do to make that sound pop a little bit more. Russell Nash has spent hours with me uh, bouncing messages to and fro saying, reduce that, that sounds down by 2 dB and see what that does, you know. Um, have, you, have you thought about doing some mid side? Uh, EQ in there, uh, and th at that point I was like, "What's mid side EQ?" You know, uh, so uh, uh, all the way through Wonder the process, where Russell... just picking up little bits and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> wonder where Russell got that from, Mark. Mm. I, I do wonder where he got that. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's 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 brilliant that you mentioned that, Sam Neon, because um, it's great to hear you mention those names. Like you got Russell Nash, you got Clinton, Helsinki Project. Uh, I've been trying to get Clintone on this show um, and the Helsinki Project for a, for mm. a while. Um, I love Clintone stuff and Helsinki Project and Russell's as well. Russell, for the audience listening, has been on the podcast. Couldn't tell you what number, but he's been on it. If you yeah. want to have a listen to that episode, um, I'm going to say it's in the twenties. Um, but yeah, it's kind of it's cool to hear that Russell's giving yourself advice because I think I, I think you can attest to this, Tim. I remember when Russell started yeah. producing and. I remember bouncing back and forth with Russell and listening yeah. to mixes and, and offering feedback and stuff. So it's really cool that he's got on. Like, I mean, he's, he's he releases a lot of music and he's done a lot. So mm. it's really cool to hear that. Don't know what you think, Tim. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, because Russell was um, well. Russell and I still talk quite a lot, um, but like you know, he'll he'll sort of in when he was beginning to sort of a uh, sort of similar time to me i guess but like in terms of releasing but obviously i've been doing music production since the 90s so quite a long time but like um but yeah no russell was just spinning things back and forth with me all the time and like you know and it's great i love that i love that in the community full stop i i spin things back i'm regularly sending you stuff mark and talking and yeah. you know like other producers and i mean yeah, it's a really great side of it, isn't it? And being able to do that because we're in the kind of point in time where we've all interconnected all across the world is is crazy, you know. I, I sat on, um, uh, what was it, on, oh, not on Twitch, on um, oh, that other thing that I continually forget about and um, that everyone's on. Discord. Um, 
Yes, that's the one. Um, yeah, I was Discord. on Discord, yeah, um, with um, uh, Faurex in an actual, like, sort of room where he was busy, sort of, as it were, mixing his stuff and creating something, and we were just, like, chatting through it and making suggestions, and he was changing the arrangement as we went, and I was like, this is crazy, this could have never happened, but, like, now we can just, like, have this rapport, you know, it's great, so, fantastic thing. Mm. It's like being in the studio, being able to look over somebody's shoulder and be like, oh, that's how you do that, or that's how you use that. Yeah. 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 It's a wonderful yeah, it's, tool in, in Discord. It is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know you could do that in Discord. I'm going to have to look yeah. into that. I didn't realize that's that was a thing. basically how Legacy FM works. It's one other person. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're cutting a lot of our stuff in Discord. And then we send the files back and forth to each other. Um, yeah. One of us ends up with all the, the stems and does the mixing and stuff, but... Yeah, almost right. exclusively done in Discord. Fantastic. Right, yeah. Just for the audi audience listening, Thalrex will be on the next Synth Pals pub uh, in February. Yeah. I'd just like to plug there. As would Neil awesome. Highway, who's going to be making his way back. Yeah. Carl. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's been doing his world his tour. <laughs> <laughs> he has. He has indeed. I can't wait to hear the stories when he gets It's back. not a musical tour, yeah. but it's a, a, a you know... <laughs> He has been 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 <laughs> yeah. having an amazing journey. Mm. Yeah, it certainly sounds like it. I think he's. Uh, I think it's well overdue for him. Any, anywho, um, let's move on. So yeah, just to readjust the question again. One thing about music production, you know now that you wish you know when you started. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, we've got Errorwolf. Errorwolf, Stu. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, apologies uh, for my uh, technology. I had to do the quick switch on the laptop, so this one seems to be doing better. Uh, yeah, apologies yeah, for that. Yeah, I think similar to Sudden Neon. I think with with me, I think it's the mixing, um, which which is something that I would have liked with known when I first started. You know, music production back in twenty twenty, probably um, seriously. But uh, yeah, it's it's like using compressors, EQs, uh, various different types of EQs. Um, and and also music theory. I think if I went back in time, I'd say I'd give myself a slap and just say, you know, brush up on your music theory, because um, I think that helps tremendously. You know, you're always referring to things when I'm um, producing, uh, mixing stuff. So, um, yeah, I think those would be the two main things, Mark. To be honest with you. Fantastic. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree with that. And I think it's it's I, what I find is, and I've had this conversation with a few. Um, audio engineers as well and there's a lot of information out there with regards to mixing and mastering and it's trying to find the ones or the what suits you because there's a lot of different flavors with regards to it and there's more and more i find i don't know about you guys when you go on social media there's a lot of i mean i'm guilty of doing it i know i put posts out there with various production bits and pieces but it's kind of like there's a wealth of information out there but i think you just at times you need to be a bit careful i think i don't are any of you on tiktok by any chance I know Tib is. Uh, we've got yeah. a few nodding heads. Mark, I now, use one your tips I... all the time. Do the you? Yeah, and, <laughs> and other producers. Lovely. There's like London Noise or something. I don't know. For yeah. some reason, I'm in this UK group. Uh, I can't seem to find any American synth <laughs> okay. Well, wow. Go where I, the quality I do, is. <laughs> I do follow a lot of those tips, and that's kind of how I'm learning this on the fly as I'm mixing, and it's it's been mm. tremendous. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of, because um, I kind of flick between Instagram and TikTok, but what I'm noticing a lot on TikTok now is there's a, there's a you probably, you could probably find it. There's a thing where there's like an incoming stitch and it's just audio engineers calling each other out and everything. It's nuts. If you, if you go and if you dig far enough, you'll see it. And they're just, they're stitching because you can stitch other videos and then they'll just call each other out and say, no, that's not right. And it, it's getting a bit wild <laughs> west out there. It's oh, right. I'm waiting for someone to... <laughs> Yeah, I'm waiting for someone to uh, find one of my old ones and be like, no, that's not right. Well, um, yeah. But I think that goes back to what I said earlier about like finding information with regards to mixing production and stuff online. Um, yeah, I, I and, go out uh, and seek information on specific topics, usually on YouTube yeah. or, or like a forum. But then I love the ones that just hit me in my feed on Instagram where it's not something I'm looking for, but then I go try it like, oh, wow. And then you just go down a rabbit hole you're trying new things yeah. and it kind of changes your game up so sometimes it's the info you're not even looking for that that stands out do you have i don't know about you but i've got like a saved folder and it's just full of music production yep. tech that i should really go through um 
and I will at some point. But I said, like like you, it'll just come up, and I'll be like, oh, I like that, I like that, I like that, and then at some point I should really go through it. Um, I'm probably not the only person who does that. It's got a whole save huh? folder. I was thinking it's it's also sometimes it's the simple stuff like uh, grouping tracks, you know, and, and, and things like that. That's I mean I think um, uh, you had you had a guest on one of your your podcasts, Mark, and he he was suggesting really simple things um, like favoriting tracks and things like uh, that. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. Know, it's, it's some of that stuff that uh, I think is useful to the uh, to the budding music, music producer. Yeah, most definitely. Just look because it just makes your workflow easier. I think going back to what Sub Neon said earlier about how um your first few productions you can get you can almost get deterred by the quality but you've got to persevere beyond that but if you've got things in place to make it easier for you like favoriting your favorite you favorite a lot there starring your favorite patches or creating those templates just to kick start your songwriting it just it removes those barriers that would otherwise potentially stop you from doing it and and kill that motivation Fantastic stuff. Well, how are we now? Oh, 25 minutes. Um, this is it. All on one question. Uh, let's go with Legacy FM then. Final one. Uh, what is the one thing about music production you know now that you wish you'd known when you started? Legacy FM. Don't pay for AI mastering. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Um, <laughs> I, 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 dare you mention the platform? Oh, gosh. What was it called? I can't remember. I can't, no. It Don't, just turned yeah, out like crap. <laughs> and then I, I, I wasted like 80 bucks and then I just did my own dirty master and put it out anyways. <laughs> 80, pa- what, 80 pounds for an online master? That's, uh, that's um, for like three or four tracks. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, as I mentioned off air, I do block bookings and I was talking to a mastering engineer on, on, uh, on the podcast earlier. That's going to come out in a few weeks. And he mentioned AI mastering off air. We forgot we didn't get around to mention it in the actual episode, but he said that. It's like one of his things he said was, and um, tips is stay away from AI mastering. I'm sure you can get some good results from it. This, but um, yeah. That yeah. Be interesting you to have you a can. Good mix I, I, good reference tracks and good. There's a way to do it, but I'm not trying to learn how to do the AI mastering. Yeah. I, I, I was going to speak devil's you, advocate there and say, has yeah. anyone experienced a, a good, had a good experience with it? Well, I use okay. Cloudbounds. Um, I don't, uh, I mean, I've sort of got Ozone 10. I do all my own mastering a lot of the time. But say I just sort of wanted to sort of put something out quickly or whatever, like just, um, you know, I've just finished a mix and I just want to kind of just like sort of send it over or something. I, I find Cloudbounds is quite useful. But I actually used it for Miami Nights, my my debut track, because I was trying some different things. And I had, I've got the kind of um, version on my desktop where I can use it as much as I want. So it doesn't cost me anything. I kind of got that on some plug-in boutique deal for some stupid amount of money for a lifetime membership for $60 or something. So I don't, it never cost me to use it at all. And so I can try as many things as I want and as many variants and changes. So in that sense, uh, you know, I can give it different references, all the rest of it. So I've got nothing to lose if I open put a track in there and I try these things out if it comes out good then it comes out good because good is good as far as it doesn't matter whether it went through AI or it went to like a guy at like Abbey Road if it sounds good it sounds good so um but like you know I mean I've been loving Ozone 10 recently which I've been using a lot um I used to do a lot of mastering like a lot of mastering of albums and all kinds of things using all of the individual stuff from my studio but at the end of the day sometimes I find that one of the things that's great with potentially using AI or ozone or something like that, something almost like a in the box solution, sort of one, one kind of uh, you know sort of plug in solution or something like that, is that you do actually hear the results and then you go back and tweak the mix. And I think the mix is where it all really, really lies, as you you said, Legacy. If you get a really good mix. But then if you put it through your mastering and it's not coming out right, you can go back to your mix, change your mix, adapt it. But if you were paying for that on every single one, that would start to notch up very quickly. And so I can see that's really where a mastering engineer is going to be a lot more useful in that that scenario. Um, um, but getting your mix right is definitely number one to getting a good 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 result anyway but you know i mean we all know that but it's um it, it's hard and it? i have yet to figure out how to get the mix right so i'm, I'm still working on that well you know yeah, 
<laughs> getting a mix right is key, as you mentioned there. And I think it's those platforms, I use them in a similar way to what Tim said there. Um, not the paid ones, like if you've got an AI, um, Ozone had one for a while. It was like a beta program whereby you could upload and it would do a master for you. And I was using that just to, to put demos out or just to get an idea of what it might sound like when it's mastered. Yeah, well, what I'm, what I'm aiming for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that, you know, and, and that, I would use it in that respect. My, my a question off the back of mastering, this is an interesting one. Do you all do, now I do, do you all do separate sessions for your mastering or do you do it on your master bus? Uh, I wonder what that means. Uh, oh, that's an master, interesting. Master bus. <laughs> got master bus. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, he's the master bus. Master bus. So basically, it's, it's rendering or bouncing a mix and then importing it into another DAW or the same one, but a separate session to master it rather than doing yeah. it in the same mix session. Uh, uh, I got a sort of in between yeah. answer to that. Because yeah. I, I use a lot of like um you know stuff on my master bus anyway um i mean i essentially could just lob it out and go there it's mastered but i tend to have everything sort of on there then i'll actually get to the final stage and output a mix at minus 6 db and take it in and master it before i so i do have a separate mastering stage but it's almost like i'm listening through you know, uh, uh, um, an SSL bus compressor, which I know you use, Mark, and then I'll have an L3 on the end, and I'll have all of these things together. So I've got a pretty close to mastered kind of level that I'm listening to at the end of it all. But then I'll drop it down yeah. by 60 B, output it, take off the limiter, drop it down to 60 B, output it, and then master it. So, yeah. I do. So do you mi you're mixing thing. into your sort of mixing into the mastering chain, then. Yeah, sort I of. am. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but the the, the yeah. limiter isn't really pushed. It's just like sort of catching mm. anything at the top, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's I interesting am. that you mentioned waves there. Um, I, I I don't know if you're all waves user. I know you are, Tim. But I've upgraded, and I have to. This this is going off topic now, and this is uh, a bugbear of mine. But now because I've upgraded, I've got to go to version fourteen. With my plugins, Oof. I have to pay again to do it, and that uh, that is not right. And I'm not taking. They're a horrible company. Now. This is my this is my gripe. I'm going to do this on air now with Waves, right? That I've paid for these plugins. I'm going to pay again. Yeah. Whereas every other platform, I, I upgraded pigments. No, no additional payment or anything along those lines with Arturia, Slate mm. Digital, nothing with those plugin alliance. But Waves, I've got to pay seventy odd quid. To have my upgraded plugins just so mm. I can use them again, and unfortunately, yeah. the the SSL bus compressor is my go-to, so I'm gonna have to do it. Um, but I just the, the only thing I'll say in their in their defence is that the plugins are really, really good. A lot of them, not all of them, some of them I really don't like, but a, a lot of them are really good for the money in the first place. I think when you get them on their sales or whatever, which they've always got on, they're like one of these places that has always got a sale on, aren't they? But like, you know, but for $30 or 30 quid or whatever, I think that a lot of the gear they sell is very good. So if you did have to pay again, yeah. it's not too terrible. But whereas like UAD, for instance, who I use a lot, like, you know, just one of their plugins will cost you two, three hundred quid for a compressor or something. And you'd be like, yeah, is that really yeah. justifiable? You know, I mean, it's a little bit of code, you know, but that's what they charge. So, you know, what can you say? Yeah. If you get sucked into they it, you get sucked plugins. into it. They are. Yeah. Did anyone but, pick up the freebie before Christmas? I think it's called Little, little Tube, Little Tube Saturation Plugin. No. Really, I, don't, I don't think it's free anymore. Um, well, there you go. Very good. <laughs> I, I recently got the Renaissance compressor, which is very good. Very uh, good. I used yeah. That on the track recently. It's a very good compressor. The Renaissance compressor. I got it once again. It was a shade under thirty quid. Whatever. I don't know what that is in dollars. Um, but that that's very good. I use that on bass and vocals, if I remember rightly. I think there's yeah. an actual specific one for vocals. But this is here's, here's a, sell waves now, even though he, it's, here's a um, an, a little known pl plugin that nobody seems to really like to choose dbx compressor uh, if you if you ever seen a bass bass players used to love playing through dbx 160 compressors and you see them in studios dbx 160s um and they just became this sort of thing that just disappeared as all software turns up and nobody you wouldn't see a dbx and then 
like Waves made a version of it. Um, and UAD have made an even better version. But I don't think they're very popular. I don't think everyone goes, like, I must have a DBX. Try it on bass. Just absolutely magic. It does magic things on bass. And, like, um, you know, if you're compressing your bass line, try a DBX 160. And there's a Waves version, which is why I say it. Like, there's only a few people that make them. But just one of those compressors nobody thinks of using. But I don't know why, but they do something really lovely on a bass. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah, they're very good compressors. I, uh, I I went. I had a brief time in a studio called Modern World in Tetbury, just outside of Bristol, and um, it's for sale if anyone's got five hundred grand. Well, it was for sale, and they uh, they had D- no. yeah <laughs> they had DBX compressors, they had distressors, they had the lot, man. Um, it, it was it was very nice at the time. I didn't really know what I was doing, so I kind of didn't make, <laughs> didn't really use them to their to my advantage. But there you go. Um, oh, so we've really? got that. So oh, sorry. Go on, Tim. No, it's a really quick one. That's right, mate, go ahead. But, but you, you mentioned that. Um, it's like, I was like literally on, online the other day, and some, I was recounting the fact that at one point I did a session at Genesis's studio for a whole weekend. Um, so um, I was producing this guy, and I, I got use of Genesis's studio, The Farm, in, which was amazing. So ridiculous uh, scenario. I was stuck in front of this enormous SSL mixing desk. We're talking like, I think, 72 input or something. It's absolutely crazy. And um, uh, uh, halfway through the sort of morning, the uh, head engineer who'd been sort of there for me suddenly went like, oh, you're all right, aren't you? You know what you're doing, and just fucked off and left me with this sort of enormous <laughs> sort of thing. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? But I had to continue this session as if I knew, and it was quite crazy. But anyway, that was a weekend spent there, but I was trying to explain to someone what this desk looked like and what the place looked like. And so I just looked it up online, and it turned up on eBay because they're literally selling the desk. And like you were saying, like, with oh, wow. Bristol and the selling... Yeah, and I was just like... It was just like some crazy amount of money, like, you know, I don't know, 150, 200,000, you know, whatever it was for the desk. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to buy that just for the kicks and giggles, just because I remember it. But, like, you know, it would have been great. I, I don't know. I don't think it would have fitted in our garage somehow. But, you know, um, but there, yeah. So there we go. It was on eBay. Still is, I think. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to spend on eBay. Yeah, oh, yeah I, that's what I was thinking. Who just goes on and go buy it now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I might, I might place a bid. Yeah, which will be a lot lower than two hundred fifty yeah. grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah see if you get it for twenty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> so. What I'm going to do, so with regards to that question, what is the one thing about music production? So mine, um, I, le- I thought I'd leave mine till last, is um, you know now that you wish you know when you started, and that is balance. Um, I was toying with balance and gain staging, and I went with balance. So when I first started out mixing, um, or pro- well, producing and then mixing, I would mix as I went along, which is fine, and I probably do that still to some extent. But what I do now and what I adopted um, is balance is getting the mix balanced and then going in and doing my EQ compression whatever it is I may be doing after that mm. is getting balanced first in the mix um, because I remember when I first started mixing and, and producing and whatnot and I'd be forever and I'd look at toying with the with the faders and I'd look at the faders and they'd be all over the shop and then it would just get to the point where it just became unmanageable and wieldy and then I get into binge editing and binge binge mixing so for me the one thing i'd wish i'd know more of and i wish somebody had said to me at the beginning was get a balance first get a balanced mix and then work off the back of that so that would be mine would be getting balanced and that's inc- that includes panning as well mm-hmm. oh actually and another one mixing in mono mixing in mono and i do a lot of my mixing in mono uh. so, yeah <laughs> here we go Tim. What, what are your thoughts on mixing in mono no no a lot of people swear by it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've not really done it, got into it myself, but a lot of people do swear by it. Mm. Yeah, I do I, listen to the track in um, in mono, but just before I start mastering it, so I listen to it on, on the side, on side, and also in mono, uh, just to listen to the frequencies. But yeah, I don't, I've not tried it in the mix yet, but it's a good idea. Yeah, the, the reason I do it in the mix is for me it's the easiest way that I can find. Uh, figure out when frequencies are clashing and instruments mm. are clashing because if it's in mono I mean you could do it in stereo as well 
Um, but I just find for my workplace so much easier. I probably should have said this uh, as my mm. answer, to be honest. Mm. But it's in mono. I can hear those conflicting frequencies, and I can get a better balance. And um, and also another one as well, which I'd known, and right at the beginning, I'm going to do three now, was um, not to mi to mix at lower volumes. Uh, not, yeah. Because everything yeah, sounds better definitely. when it's loud. Mm -hmm. mm. Mix at lower volumes. I did spend the first 20 years of my life completely disregarding that in every way, shape or form. <laughs> That's why I'm partly deaf, I think. I just like absolutely yeah. blew the speakers through the roof. It was great having a studio where you could just turn it up until four in the morning. Nobody gave a fuck. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Season so. done. Season yeah, done. it doesn't, that, doesn't that produce good... Slowly creep it up. does not produce good mixes. It doesn't. No. I think it's yeah. good for tracking, though. I will say that. I will say a bit of volume can be really good for tracking. Hmm. Yeah, I think it helps with the vibe. I think if you've got musicians yeah. in the room and it's a quiet track, you're quietly tracking. From my yeah. experience, when I've been recording, uh, I've had, I've been the artist being recorded. Mm. It's quiet. Yeah. Yeah, and you want to get enough to uh, get a vibe, to, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I'm going back to doing it at a lower level as well. If you are mixing it at a lower level, I think it it translate. Trans obviously, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pump it at some point to see what it sounds like loud. But I think it translate better. It translates better. Sorry, on streaming platforms, if you've done it at a lower level, because yeah. um, inherently streaming platforms will do that to it if it's mastered it to a high level anyway. And then if they've done that and your mix doesn't sound good at a low level, then your mix is is done. Although that you really don't. I mean, this is going down the intricacies of mastering now. You should pick up that during the mastering process. But gentlemen, I realise we're forty minutes in now, and we've got some music <laughs> to play. So I don't want to lose time. No. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna play some music now. This is this is a new feature I brought in at the uh, this, the twelve days of synthness, and uh, it went quite well. One well, one thing we did realise is that when the music's playing, it, it's quite awkward. Everyone's just sat looking at the screen. Um, which, is, which is quite odd, but yeah, yeah, you exactly. No one really knew what to do. You <laughs> yeah, you can do for free. If you're watching this on YouTube, you, um, you, you might see some individuals dancing. You'll also, I, I forgot to mention this, but Sub Neon has, is, uh, it has a T-shirt that says Sub Neon on it. Yeah, it's, it's great. Really, I'm, um, I'm liking the T-shirt a lot. Uh, it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a world idea. exclusive. Yeah, there, there is literally only one in existence. And, um, <laughs> I can't imagine any, anyone would want to buy one, so there's not going to be any shop buy. Well, you say that people are buying R nine <laughs> t-shirts. I've sold about. I've sold. I've a, seen. Yeah, a few now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't own one myself yet. I'm too skint. <laughs> but yeah, I must buy one. Hmm. Mm. So, Tim, are you doing it um, by to order then? Uh, so yeah, because I was yeah. going to say you're going to bring some to the gig in February. Or, I, I or probably will. I will buy some myself actually and bring them to the gig. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I will order some. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, might might so, sell you uh, one. UK <laughs> <laughs> UK audience. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the date of that? Uh, that, that it's the 25th it's of February. Be, be along to that. Excellent. And Excellent. It is. It's in Bristol. Bristol. Mm. Isn't it? Mm. It is yeah twenty twenty fifth of twenty fifth of February yeah it's going to be a really good day I think because it's you know that in the that in the afternoon and then it's going on to Sunset Boulevard at um, in the evening so it's going to be um, yeah no dusk waves followed by Sunset Boulevard loads and loads of different synthwave acts all live good yeah yeah at, That's at it the makes Bristol sound very nice. Sunset Boulevard. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Bristol. Bristol and Sunset Boulevard aren't really connected, are they? Other than that, you know. <laughs> uh, mm. uh, but yeah, I, I love. I lived there for a while. It's a fantastic city. Um, but mm. yeah, Sunset Boulevard. Um, so let's go with uh, Sub Neon. If we play yours first, <laughs> mm. just discover that I love Bristol. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not slagging off Bristol there. Uh, I was born there. Uh, Sub Neon, <laughs> if you, uh, do you want to give us a quick run through of your uh, your tracks? We've got thirty seconds. Give a bit a bit of background on this track. Yeah. Well. Okay. It's uh, it's the fourth track that I produced uh, under under Sub Neon, and um, it. It's it kind of a follow on to my previous release, which was uh, called Step Up, which um, is moving away from what I, I, I wanted to achieve from, from suddenly on to a degree, but I quite liked it. So it's a bit more upbeat than, my, than I would generally uh, 
put out there. But um, no, it, 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 I, the, the, the tracks that I produce are very much reflective of the mood that I have at a, at a particular moment in time. So, um, you know, uh, after coming out of some pretty tough times, things were looking up with new jobs and, and you know, family stuff getting resolved and all the rest of it. So I, I wanted to produce something that um, would give me a, a sort of a, a thumping beat and a, and a fat bass and, a, and a, something to nod along to as I drive down the road. So, um, uh, and I, I put the uh, a snippet of the track out on Instagram because I couldn't think of a name uh, and half a dozen to a dozen people just uh, uh, picked Glow. Uh, so, and, and it seemed to fit quite nicely with the with the vibe of the track. So, so yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Have you got a release date for it yet? Uh, it will be when you finish mastering it, Mark. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that would help <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic stuff. Right, <laughs> let's play. Let's play. Uh, so, this is Glow. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. I like that you had a little fade there at the end. That was, that was great. That yeah, reminds uh, me um, <laughs> of um, a lot of, of Clintone, actually. It's interesting you mentioned yeah. that we ideas back and forth with Clintone. Because yeah. um, it reminds me of, of um, there's, I can hear the, the subtleties of Clintone in there. And I see Tim nodding, lo Tim mm. nodding along. I, I quite like that sort of thing because it's got that, uh, well, a bit like Clintone, the sort of like, and when you mention it, it's, got, it's sort of synthwave vibe, but a sort of slightly more club EDM kind of mm. tinge to it, mm. but it's not that. It's not straightforward, you know. I mean, and I'd say the same with Clinton. It's definitely sort of synthwave retro kind of vibe in there, but uh, but at the same, a more dance sort of floor version of it, which is quite a lot of stuff that I like that really sits in that sort of mould. I think so. Nice, really melodic, and but got a good, really, as you say, thumping groove in there, which is good. Yeah. Yep. And I appreciate everyone nodding along and dancing. I think I was the only one that wasn't. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> yeah. 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 Always yeah. Our yeah. Sounds great. 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly it. That's it. Yeah, when you've heard the same song so many times, yeah. It's, yeah. When somebody plays the music, my own music back to me, I'm like, no, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which probably shouldn't do that to be honest. Um, there you go. Um, so whilst I'm, whilst we're talking to yourself there, Legacy FM, do you want to give us a bit of a run through of the the track you've you've sent across? Oh shit. Okay. So this one's called Desire. We just put out an album, and then I'm just already like trying to do something different. I just got tired of hearing those old songs from uh, Dystopian. But uh, yeah, a different kind of vibe. I, I'm into the, like genre blending, so it's a little bit more of like a new wave post punk mixed with some some trap and uh, some synthy bass and other synth sounds. But yeah, uh, cars, girls, and that about sums it up. <laughs> Fantastic trap. Can't go wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trap wave, trap wave, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been. I've, uh, who somebody sent me a song to listen to earlier today? I can't remember who it was, um, but there were elements of it in there as well with the hi hats. And I can certainly hear. I haven't, I haven't listened to this all the way through, but I'm sure there's going to be more and more of that coming through. But let's give it a listen before I well, stop me waffling on. <laughs>
but that was a bit longer than 30 yeah. seconds. I didn't want to cut it halfway through the uh, the phrasing there. So yeah, it's definitely like a, two different songs mashed into one. So there's a, it goes into a breakdown where the vibe just completely changes. And then it, it circles it. back to that, that kind yeah. of feel. Fantastic. But, yeah, that's fun. Mm. The vocals. Um, is that yourself or your yeah. um, collaborator? No, just me trying to figure it out. <laughs> no, I like that. That's really good. Actually. Yeah, I like the vocals. You're really good. And he, the new wave thing you mentioned, yeah, I can definitely hear that in the, yeah, which is nice. So, yeah, I really like that song. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Your What's vocal processing. What what are you what are you uh, using to get you don't that sort know, of? Dude, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's go with like the the the, the it, there's some sort of um, modulation or something going on there. Mm. It, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, the, it's uh, two, maybe yeah, three or four different vocal tracks. So there's some harmonies, but yeah, just a little bit of reverb and um, I don't know some vocal chain I just found on a YouTube video and it's all built in. Uh, for to Ableton, so I didn't have to get any extra plugins cool. or anything for it. So I don't know. Microphone helps, I guess. I have no <laughs> yeah, idea. It's always a good doing, place so. to start. It's always a good place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't get far without one in the vocal department. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you can have all the equipment you want, but if you haven't got a microphone, you're not going to lay down any vocals. Oh yeah. right, well, unless you've got a phone. You still I wish I had a better phone. answer. I really have no idea how I did it, to be honest. No, that's mm. fine, man. That's fine. It's um, I just wing it's it. just intrigued because it's, it's got an it kind of it sits really well there because of the mm. processing that's done on it. It just it kind of suits the aesthetic sound of the song. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll and take um, I love it. I didn't hear the trap as much as I was thinking. But, was, you know. was it already out? Mm. Yeah, it's later on. Uh, no, <laughs> I might just do this one as a single. Uh, we've got yeah. like four or five other tracks going for a new album, but we started off doing two albums without really singles and uh, kind of against the flow of what people say you should do, just punch out a bunch of singles and promote each one of them. Uh, but you know, I just don't have time for all that. So two albums, put them out. And I think now we're going to go the single route and maybe do a cover. Cool. I'm just going to skip on a minute. I kind of want to hear this trap. Um, this goes against my 30 second rule that Sorry. I have. I, I, I'm intrigued by the, the trap now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming this is the bit, is this the yeah, bit yeah, you've She's racing through the night with my love in her hands. She said she liked exotics, but the first JDM. Most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. One bombshell in my slam past 13. Cherry red. Cool. Yeah, mm. I can hear the trap. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Are you uh, cool. when you're creating those those patterns? Are you using a um, a sequencer, or are you triggering them with a with a controller, or are you drawing them in with a mouse? A Kai MPK Mini Two, or I'll use a I got a Roland drum set. So nice. been doing a lot of uh, sound design and and getting kits actually you know ported over to that. Um, or I'll just yeah. draw them in. I usually start <laughs> off playing either on pads or on the, on the kit, and then I'll fix it up and add more to it. Yeah, it's funny because I've been you busy like MPK. I've been busy all week like doing the sort of opposite, which is translating all my tracks that I've done for this live show. So I'm busy converting every single like sample I've created for my drummer. He's firing them all off off a of Roland. He's he's got a sample pad, one of their SPX sample pad things, and he's like sort of, so he's loading them all in. So it's going to be exactly he's going to be playing the tr the, the samples from my tracks, but you know, he's actually firing them and playing them live. And it's really weird. I heard the first video back of him playing it. He's a really great drummer, but it's just like really different hearing a real drummer sort of playing what you've programmed. You know, it's kind of weird, but yeah, it sounded good. So yeah, but I. I'm so bored of exporting drum sounds. I didn't realise I made that many drum sounds and like all the EQ and a compression and effects, and then you you want to get them all right. So yeah, it takes ages. Mm. It's gotta be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Tim. It's it's gonna be uh, nice for me to to be the one observing because I remember being in a band and being the one that was everyone was. <laughs> not looking at me but looking at the yeah. band you know uh, so it's going to yeah. be nice to be in the crowd and, uh, uh, well hopefully so yes uh, 
Yeah. It'll all be fine unless some something horribly goes wrong with the technology. I think that's the one thing I've always done band stuff where, you know, I haven't really had to worry on tech. The most that might go wrong might be like, you know, the drummer would fall off his stool or like, you know, at the back or like the, you know, you break a string or like the, the keyboard players might have to restart his keyboard or something. But you know what I mean? It was, there wasn't all yeah. that much to go wrong, technically speaking, but like, this is the trouble when you're doing stuff with track. I mean, you, your computer goes down, something happens like that. It's just done, isn't it? It's just like suddenly all your music stops and you, you, you're you left there with someone hitting some pads and a, like a guitar. So it could be it could be quite bad news if it goes wrong. So, yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. Mm. Mic up those pads. Get a yeah, yeah. Mic on the pads. You just have them hitting yeah. the pads. I'm putting yeah, my entire trust... In a 2012 MacBook. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's pretty seat of the pants, isn't one. it? <laughs> I don't yeah, have enough money have for one another one. <laughs> yeah, it's got an Mine's SSD in steam, it. I think, when I got rid of it. Oh, has it? Oh, that, well, that yeah. was better than mine. Mine didn't have an yeah. SSD. SSD yeah. and 8 gig yeah. in it, so, you know. Mm. Okay. But it still has um, no guts. <laughs> 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 um so final final track is from Aero Wolf. Um do you want to give us just a bit of a background on this track for us? Yeah, sure Mark. Yeah, th this was um this was a track one of kind of one of my earlier um tunes called um Photons is the name of it. Uh and uh, it was a collaboration with an Italian singer uh, who I funny enough who I met on Instagram, um Antonello Yamana. Um and uh, he's kind of got that um kind of baritone voice that uh, is kind of synonymous with kind of early 80s music I think it sounds quite similar to that anyway so this this is sort of similar to what Legacy was described of his track it's quite a new wave um, that was the main inspiration so kind of mid 80s I think uh, rather than earlier 80s but uh, I wanted to do a bit of a remix of it um, just putting my producer skills to uh, to good use over the sort of two or three years of um, since I first started so Wanted to give it a bit of a uh, bit of oomph, a uh, bit of punch, and this is the kind of result. So um, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the outcome. Excellent stuff, right? Without yeah. further ado. It's an anti climax. Sorry, folks. It doesn't. Um... That's that one. Okay. Uh, it doesn't want to play. Let's. Um... Oh, all right, let's try it. I'm going to upload it again and see if that works. Mm. It reminds me of a band, and I cannot think of who it is from the. Yeah, I'm, I'm really loving stuff like that right now. Yeah. I wanted to make it kind of live sounding as well, so hopefully it comes across like that. But uh, yeah, and yeah, then it just kicks in with the kind of main lead melody after that's that's the chorus. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the outcome with the result. It's come out come out quite well. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the band. It, it's certainly got like a, a synth, 80s synth pop. Mm. Sort of sound to it, uh, which I, I love. I can listen to that sort of stuff all day. It's really, really cool. Um, how did you? I'm always intrigued by vocals because mm. I find that vocal mixing is, is probably one of the most challenging aspects of, of a mix and getting the vocals right. What have you used to, um, not necessarily EQ compression, but like create that sort of etherealness of the vocal? I think I use quite a few different um, elements um, on on his vocals because his vocals were quite raw. Um, so I use quite a few different um, effects um, from memory. I mean, I did use a vocoder on one of the um, layers of the vocals, um, as well as obviously the deesser. I use that. Um, I use a CLA seventy six compressor on the vocals, and then pan, panned 
you know, one left, one right, as you as you would normally do. I think I got that tip from you, Mark, maybe one of your videos. But uh, yeah, try to try to make it sound a bit uh, a bit more depth to the vocals. Um, I think there were some Ableton plugins I used as well. Um, I'm trying to think what which ones I used, uh, but there were there was a few I used. You know, stock plugins um, on the vocals just to just to give it a bit more oomph. But uh, fantastic, yeah. We've got um, two, two Ableton users. Legacy F, you said Ableton. Sub Neon, are you using Ableton as well? Yeah, wow, yeah. The first Ableton time we've ever been outgunned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three Ableton users. I know Tim, you're Cubase, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I use the only door worth using here, yeah. No. I use Main yeah. Stage. I know we're having a chat about Main Stage. Yeah, yeah, I was trying Main Stage. Gave up with it, gone back to Cubes. Mm. Yeah. But Ableton's good for live, isn't it? I mean, uh, mm. I don't know if you guys, Ableton users, if you've ever used it live or considered using it live. Um, I dabble I've, got, I've got to learn how to use it in a studio environment first. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's so. going to work uh, taking it out on the road. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I. Like I Tim says right at the beginning, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I ended up going back to. Having, I tried main stage and I tried um, Ableton, uh, like thinking that I would try those for my live show, but I've ended up going back to Cubase and making it work for what I want to do because I know it inside out. So and it's it's yeah. what I know. Stick with what you know and learn it well, and and then I've worked out ways that I can do what I want to do in it. I mean, if you were doing loop based stuff like a lot of people do on Ableton, it, it wouldn't work, really work. It's not really designed for that. But like you know. That what I'm doing, it's going to work, so it should be all right. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gents, uh, we, we've come to the hour mark now, so get, we're going to we're going to wrap it up. It's been great. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll go around to each of you. If you can just um, tell our audience where they can find you online, and um, I'll put all those links in the show notes for the episode, so they can they can find you and find your music. So I'll, I'll go around on the screen. It's so a Legacy FM. Where can the audience find you online? I'm all over the internet. Can't miss me. Uh, no, so uh, <laughs> but the internet, <laughs> all the socials, of course. Sick. I usually only focus on Instagram. Um, music's on Spotify, Apple Music, all the all the streaming services. But yeah, yeah, just hit me up on IG. I'm down to collab, whatever. Fantastic, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Sub Neon, uh, where can we find you? Uh, same as Legacy, I'm on every every single uh, <laughs> social media outlet there there is. Uh, uh, Spotify is is my primary uh, route to to the audience, I guess, and uh, Instagram for for social media. So just search sub neon sub underscore neon, and you'll be able to find it. Brilliant. Wait, um, can I, can I add all? Legacy FM vibes? Oh, go on, go on. Is my IG Legacy FM vibes? Legacy FM Legacy FM vibes. Excellent. I assume we're uh, following Errol. each other. I'm going to check. I, I was about to say, I gave I gave everyone a follow um, today. I think I was listening to Legacy FM's um, album. Very very good actually. And I like your bio on Spotify. I might uh, might think it's too much. Nobody. Should <laughs> it's a little Easter egg. Don't ruin it here though. Oh, I'm gonna have to look this up. <laughs> yeah, same same with me. All the usual all the usual places. If you search up Era Wolf uh, music or Era Wolf, not to be confused with the gaming um, Era Wolf. Um, but uh, yeah, Bandcamp, usual place, Era Wolf Music. Yeah, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you very much, Era Wolf. Uh, Legacy, I'm, just, I'm not gonna spoil it, I just looked it up. It's very good, I like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really good. Audience listening, uh, go check out Legacy FF on Spotify and look oh, I'm gonna it do that. <laughs> and, uh, respond to it, respond to it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tim, where where can the audience find you? Yeah, Isle Nine Music um, on IG, TikTok, uh, YouTube, um, Facebook, all the rest of it. I, I'm an IG person, really, so you're going to find me there. And I agree, Spotify is probably my main sort of streaming platform. And Bandcamp, absolutely, um, uh, just Isle Nine. Just search Isle Nine on Bandcamp. Um, on um, Twitter, I'm pretty active, but as well, but like. Um, like uh, you, you'll find me at Isle Nine Synthwave. Actually, um, I'm also at Isle Nine Music, but my Isle Nine Synthwave account is much bigger. So, you know, but like essentially, yeah, hit me up on IG, whatever you want. I am there probably. 
Brilliant. Thank you very much. And as I mentioned at the beginning, or rather at the beginning of this, this section, I'll, I'll put all the links in the show notes. So, folks, uh, audience listening, if you want to join myself and others at the Synth Files Pub, don't forget, and uh, and you want to feature on this, don't forget you can go to www.insidethemixpodcast.podia.com. As um, as you can li- listen from this episode, it's just a great way to network, chat to, chat to your peers and learn and share ideas. And every episode gets published on air. So if you want to feature a snippet of a track and we can have a quick chat about it on air, if you've got something coming up or you need help with a particular bit, you can get that featured in the episode as well. Gentlemen, thank you very much for this today. It's been great. It's been a great start to 2023 in the Synth Pals pub, I'm reopening the doors. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. cheers.